Now, the question is, what happens if you happen to marry someone who might be the wrong kind of person? Because it happens. Sometimes we make decisions where we weren't thinking biblically, or maybe neither one of us was saved. Or maybe I thought she was saved. Or maybe I thought he was saved. What happens then? Well, let's look and see what the Bible says. Let's go to what, let's go to Jesus first. Matthew 19. Because what we want to see, what we want to see is what if a person is being beat? Can they leave? That's important because unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, it's happening. It's happening far too often where the person would much rather, the woman would much rather be somewhere than home or would much rather him not be home. She's more, she's more afraid of her house when he's there. That, that's a horrible existence. No one should be forced to live in that in that sort of situation. And it's more peace when either she's out of the house or when he's at work. So what do you do? Well, let's go to Matthew 19. Starting in verse 3, some of the Pharisees came to Jesus testing him and asking him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? So let's see what Jesus says. He says, uh, you, have, you have not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female. And he said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. That's the big issue. Getting married and not becoming one. You're doing your thing. He's doing her thing. That's a problem. That is a problem. Now, remember, the Bible says that God hates divorce. What did I, well, I didn't change this. I didn't change this. Um, but not one has done so uh, who has a remnant of the spirit. And where am I at? Oh, verse 16. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. And him who covers his garment with wrong, says the Lord of hosts. So God hates divorce. Jesus is speaking on this. And so he says, so there are no longer two, but one flesh. Verse 19, I mean, chapter 19, verse six. Now, what therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. But what if God wasn't the one that joined? I don't feel like God joined us together. Well, we're coming that way. They said to him, why then did Moses command to give her a certificate of divorce and send her away? He said to them, because of your hardness of heart, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it, it has not been this way. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for immorality and marries another woman commits adultery. So at this point, Jesus speaks about when, uh, when adultery has been committed, that's an acceptable reason to leave. Okay. But Jesus didn't seem to cover all of it. Jesus doesn't seem to cover everything. Well, a couple of things. One, he's talking to who? To these Jews. And he brings up the law in Moses and what God has stated. So he's not speaking to anyone else so they can understand where he's coming from. But Jesus just did not bring up everything. Wish he would have. What, what, what about Jesus if this happens? What about Jesus if that happens? So let's cover a couple of things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal, I want to deal with this issue about women being beaten and what happens to the church, what happens to the woman, what can she do? Jesus talks about marriage. Not, I'm sorry, not Jesus. Paul talks about marriage in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Paul is talking about unity. And we want to see what he brings up here. Now, Paul is literally speaking for the Lord. He's going to make a statement. And I want you to see what this statement is, what it's entailing. Jesus does not cover everything pertaining to the body, pertaining to Christians. His disciples or his apostles will. And those are the, the guidance that we have as a, as a body. Now concerning the things about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, but because of immoralities, each man is to have his own wife or woman, Ganaika, uh, and each woman is to have her own man, Andra. The male, the husband must fulfill his duties to his wife and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Now, I've seen weak men and women use to say, well, see, I can, her body is mine, not to beat, not to abuse. No, sir, um, because you are to treat her and him like you would your own body. You love and cherish your body. When you're hungry, matter of fact, the first sign of any hunger pains, you are in the kitchen. You, you, your head is in the refrigerator. 
So you treat her with the same level of love and respect that you have for yourself. When Jesus says, speaking of the two greatest commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart and everything about you, and then love your neighbors, that necessarily includes your wife. So the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, also the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Stop depriving one another except by agreement for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer and come together again so that, so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. But this I say by way of concession, not a command, yet I wish that all men were even as I myself am. However, each man has his own gift. So he's saying, I would. it'd be really good if you all just didn't even get married, just, just devoted yourself to Christ. There's no command to say everyone should devote yourself to Christ and not get married. No. But if you could, hey, cool. If not, then here are the rules governing you if you want to be with someone else so that you're not sitting there burning, thinking about lusting after and so forth. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows that it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they do not have self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Verse 10. But to the married, I give instructions. Here's a problem that some folks think is a problem. But I, not the Lord, that the wife, but I, not, I'm sorry, not I, but the Lord, that the wife should not leave her husband. But if she does not leave, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband, and that the husband should not divorce his wife. Let's read it again. But to the married, I give instructions, not I, but the Lord, that the wife should never should not leave her husband. Now, we don't really have a lot of guidance on this. This is Paul bringing up something that wasn't fully covered before by Jesus, which is why the church is asking these questions. He says, but if she, if she does leave, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband, and that the husband should not divorce his wife. Problem is, what happens if she leaves and then he gets remarried? That's not her husband. We're going to see why in a second. But to the rest, I, the rest I say, not the Lord, that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, he must not divorce. In other words, this being unequally yoked, marrying someone that's not a believer, if she consents to stay, and you have her, you can't. You cannot divorce her. You married this unbeliever and she's sticking around. You can't put her away because she's an unbeliever and vice versa. And a woman who has an unbelieving husband and he consents to live with her, she must not send her husband away. For the unbelieving husband, and we're getting to the whole violence part, for the unbelieving husband, I'm sorry, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified through his wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified through her believing husband. For otherwise, your children are unclean, but now they are holy. Doesn't mean that merely being married to a Christian makes you saved. That's not what the point is that the opportunity for you to hear the gospel is there. I don't know how many stories there are where there are women who said, listen, my husband wasn't saved. He was this, he was that. But I prayed. I loved him. I showed myself to be a godly woman. The next thing you know, you've got him as a believer. You, there are thousands of stories like that and vice versa where the woman was like that and the man showed himself to be uh, to be godless. I said, what schools did I go to? I was only there for a year and a half. I went to Wilbur Wright Middle School. First middle school at that time had uh, metal, metal detectors. My brother went to North Division, then got chased out of there by the Latin Kings, <laughs> and then went to Washington. I just Anyway, so here we see this happening. If you have an unbelieving spouse and they don't leave, you must stay there. Whoever you marry, you said I do, that's the one. But what if they leave? Now we've got something else. Yet, if the unbelieving one leaves, let him leave. The brother or sister is not under bondage in such case, but God has called us to peace. For how, how do you know a wife, whether you will save your husband, or how do you know a husband, whether you will save her? That's the point that he's making previously. So if they're an unbeliever and you stay, how do you not know that that person won't be saved because of what you're doing? Because of you being a believer and your presence before them. So what happens if an unbeliever leaves? And I'm, and I'm making a point. This We're going to get to this issue about if a husband beats his wife, what should happen? Well, the issue is if this unbeliever leaves, what has he done? He has deserted her and he should be treated like an unbeliever. And he didn't have to be reconciled. She didn't have to be reconciled because this is an unbeliever. Are you guys following? I want to, I want to make sure you guys are following me on this. 
okay? Because the Bible doesn't really seem to give a lot of guidance on this. If a man is beating a woman, what should happen? Now, if a woman, I mean, a man is beating a woman and they, and the church or the, or the people they want to separate, they should, they should. Now, do they want, maybe they want to separate and see if they can work it out. Fine. I have wonderful. Amen. But what if there cannot be any working out? He's a jerk. He's this. He wants to beat up her. Up. He, he, what happens? They took a break. She came back. He did it again. What, what is to happen? Well, a couple of things are supposed to happen. I want to give you guys some, some things. One, the guidance of the church, because the church needs to be stepping in. This is why it is vitally important that you belong to a church family and that you be, they need to know what's going on with you. You need to know what's going on with them. That way we can help each other. We are part of the same family. And let's say, uh, is there anybody in the chat's name Earl? Is there anyone in the chat's name Earl? <laughs> Good. If there's no one in the chat's name Earl, I'm going to just make up a fictitious name, Earl. Earl is beating on Bobby Sue. Bobby Sue, that's a girl's name. Beating on Bobby Sue. No, I'm sorry. JR. Let's go with J JR is beating up on Sue Ellen. <laughs> Hopefully there's no JRs. JR is beating up on Sue Ellen. Some of y'all don't know who is JR and who is Sue Ellen. JR is beating up on Sue Ellen and he won't stop. So what does the church do? What do the men do? Excuse me, JR. Here, hold this for a second. Hold what? These fists. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> the church is supposed to step in. That's their sister that he's beating on. How many of you all have children, boy and girl, at least one boy and at least a girl? If your son ever hits your daughter, hopefully daddy is going to be right there to exact discipline. So brother Earl, we think he's brother Earl, is beating up on sister Sue Ellen. I mean, I'm sorry, brother JR is beating up on sister Sue Ellen. So the church comes in, you got to go. Now, here's what happens. Let's go to a pastor. Let's see if this works. Matthew 15, 18, 15. If your brother sins, go and show him his faults in private. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. Now, this works in marriage also, ladies and gentlemen. This works in, this also applies to marriage. Uh, if he does not listen, take one or two more with you so that by the witness of of those, they can be, the fact may be confirmed. So Sue Ellen is saying, JR is beating on me. And Sue Ellen comes and gets, let's say Sue Ellen comes and gets me and Stevie. Me and Stevie show up. That ain't gonna happen no more, JR. That, that was your, that, that, that last hit was your last hit. So now what are we, are we gonna fix this? JR is going to consent to discipline. He's gonna consent to help. We wanna help JR. We want to help the family. We want to grow the family. This can be an awesome testimony. However, if Jr. doesn't get right, what happens? Monkey moves already ahead of me. What do we do, monkey moves? What happens, ladies and gentlemen? What does the church do to Jr. If he refuses to listen to them, tell to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. What are we saying now? He is to be treated... Let me put it on the screen. How now is Jr. to be treated? How? What is Jr. in our eyes, in the church's eyes? Jr. is now an unbeliever to us. We're just told we're told to treat him that way. Jr., you are an unbeliever. Then let's go look at something else. Jr. has some duties to fulfill prior to him and even through him beating his wife. JR is supposed to act a certain way. Matter of fact, this applies to you men, even if you ain't beating your woman. Yeah, you, you don't get a pass because you don't beat her, but you're doing other stuff. Yeah, you don't get a pass, mister. You don't get a pass. Here it is. And this is for all you guys that want me to be tougher on the women. Take it up with God. Here it is. He says, but if anyone does not provide for his own home, for his own, 
and especially for especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. We read that again. But if he does not provide, what does this word provide right here mean? Look at the bottom. To think about ahead of time, to try to take care of, to do for, to make for. If he doesn't do that, and he's talking about you fellas, us fellas, not them. I wish, I wish, I wish you would just grow up, be sincere, be men of God, even if you hadn't got there yet. Attain for the ranks of manhood. Desire to be a man. That way, when we treat you like a man, you can handle the load. But I can't treat you like a man if you want to still stay in the ranks of a boy. You getting upset? Fine. Just let it sit in there and marinate because this will help you. Some of you guys want to keep blaming women. The reason why she's acting a certain way is because she hadn't seen a man in her life. But I'm married. Doesn't mean she's still seen a man. People marry boys and males all the time. So if you're not taking care of her needs, providing for her, especially his own household, how are we to treat that person? The Bible says he is worse than an unbeliever. We're finding out this person ain't, ain't a believer. We're finding out the, remember, one of the rules is that you must love the Lord. Now, how do you know you love God? By your love for your fellow man. Certainly that, that applies to your family. So you can't tell us that you love God and you don't love her. You can't tell us you don't you love God and you don't love him. You, you sell it to somebody else because we ain't buying it. No, no, no. There are no fools over on this channel. And so if you don't love your brother, well, what am I? How, how do I know I'm a Christian? Do you love your fellow man? I don't mean that you tolerate everything about him, but do you love him? If you do not love your fellow man, you are you don't love God. That is God speaking, 1 John 4. So now, if you don't love your fellow man and you don't love the woman who you're supposed to be one flesh, one, you're horrible. You are horrible. If you don't love the woman who God has joined, supposedly joined you together and you'd be one flesh, you don't love her, you don't provide for her, you are not fit to even call yourself a man. I won't call you one. I'll call you a male. I'll call you in the generic term, brother. I might even give you the head nut. I won't give you one of these because that's me knowing you. I'll give you one of these. Hey, hey, stranger, how you doing? And because you, you are not, you're not part of us. Now, if you want to, if you want coming back around, that's fine. But you won't even provide for your own. Look what it says. Look what it says. If the certain person, certain one of his own tone, idiom, that is idiom, that's his own people, Kai Melista, especially of his household. You're not taking care of your wife. You're not taking care of your kids. You're horrible. Or as we would say, you're just sorry. And not providing, not taking care of them. Ladies and gentlemen, beating her is not taking care of her. Oh, I, listen, I buy her stuff. The, I keep a roof over her head, but I beat her. Okay. Okay. Tell that to your daddy, not him, him. Because you, you're not his. You are not his. The Bible says, and we bring this up all the time, husbands, Peter says, you're, you husbands in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way as with someone weaker. Now, how do you want to take that? Do you want to take that as her physically weaker? We know that in some areas, are women weaker than men in some areas? In some areas, yes. Some areas, women are better. They're, God has made us different. God has made us different. And so in some areas, we are different. Remember, when, when the Lord God walked through the garden, after they had bitten the fruit, God did not say, hey, Adam, hey, Eve, where y'all at? Hey, hey, y'all, hey, everybody. No, Adam, where are you? And he specifically got on him for doing what his wife told him to do. I'm holding you responsible. Maybe, may, I, and I think maybe it's good that some of you guys shouldn't be. There are some men that I'm thankful that are not married. I really am. Because marriage is not easy. Can I, <laughs> let me go, let me go Baptist for you. Let me go National Baptist Convention. Can I, can I get a witness? Have I got a witness? 
marriage is marriage is difficult. Marriage is hard. It's supposed to be. Living with yourself is hard. Certainly marrying some another person, that can be hard. And she don't see things the way you see. You don't see things the way she there are times where you just want to you you think about, you know, you think about it. <laughs> don't think about it too long. Marriage is hard. But it grows you. It may listen, it, it absolutely makes you better. And for you to treat her that way, what have you said? What are, what are you saying about her? Timothy, see, are you are you laughing at me doing this? Don't do don't don't do that. Don't don't do that. <laughs> I can't do that around my wife. You know, what do you what do you anyway? Marriage is hard. And the 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 greater bulk of responsibility is on you. Now the good news is you don't have to sign up for it. You just don't. But what does Jesus tell you to do? Husbands, love your wives just as they're waiting. Doggone it. Doggone it. You done messed up the Lord, you done you, you messed up the game. You have messed up the game, Lord. You've messed it. Why do I have to love her the way you love me? I mean, I gotta die for her? Yep. Or be prepared for it. Be prepared for it. We can't, my, our sleeping arrangements are such, yeah, is it just me? Is it just me? Our sleeping arrangements are such, and, I, and I'll, I'll get to your to you guys' uh, questions in a second. But our sleeping arrangements are such to where my wife can't sleep on the side of the bed that's closest to the door. Now, my wife likes to move stuff around, change it. Let's put the bed over here. Let's put the bed over there. So sometimes I'm sleeping on the left side of the bed. Sometimes I'm on the right side of the bed. Why? Because that door is for me. So if they come in, they got to kill me first. Now, that might mean you're trapped behind a dead body, but that's how it is. When we walk into the door to the house, my wife doesn't go in first. No. I go in first. And I tell her, baby, if, if I'm gonna get killed, just just listen, just listen out. Listen out for the thud if I hit the ground. Yeah. If there's some danger or something happening in the in the in the uh, uh, in a, in a room that we're going into or some store, I'm I, listen. I'm leading the way. I'm leading the way. I'm the protector of my house. If things don't go right, it's on me, not just financially, but everything else. Somebody comes through. I want to talk. I'll I'll, ne I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this, guys. Listen, I almost there was a time where I I made up my mind I wasn't gonna be here. My wife goes to was it. Was it Lowe's or Home? I think it was Home Depot. Home, one of those. I think it was Home Depot. And some guy bumped into my wife in, in the car. No big deal. And now he's talking trash to her. He's running his, he's all those different, he's just running his mouth. And she calls me. I got my, I got some, some sweatpants on. I take these house shoes off, put on my shoes, grab my gloves. Cause you know, that's how we got up, got my gloves and I'm driving 80 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour to get there. So she calls me just before I get there. He's gone. Well, well what color was his van? What color was it? I'm going after him. This won't be tolerated. This will not assert. I'm sorry. This won't be tolerated. You can get away with that to me. You can listen. You can disrespect me, all those things. But now you disrespect my, my wife and daughter. Nah, 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 nah. In my mind, I got to beat you up. <laughs> In my, because that's my wife. That's my daughter. So that's how it is. There, I, it, It's not even a thought in my mind to protect her. It's not even a thought in my mind to protect them. Some of you guys got to think about it. Sometimes I don't even have a problem with protecting her from her or from me. So he says, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Well, how so? Do it just Well, he died. He was, matter of fact, he came to die so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water and with the word. Oh, by the way, how about you cover the word with her too? Maybe that would help too. Maybe if some of you all relationships were centered about the word, that, that would help as well. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> that he might present himself, the church, in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle 
or any such thing. Do you see the goal? The goal for the Lord is the end result for his bride. The goal for me is the end result for my bride, for my family. That's the, that's the goal. Someone says, God, please, I like this. Please help me to get a woman who is after you. I cannot handle women without God. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. The way that you get a woman's after you is if she sees that you're after God. If she sees that you are after God, that's the kind of woman you're going to attract. And the, you have the Holy Spirit in you. You have a, a good, you have hopefully got a good head on your shoulders. Wisdom will prevail. Wisdom will prevail. And so if she sees what kind of men, I can promise you the, the kind of women that we're talking about that are having these problems out that you see on YouTube and Facebook, they're not going after men like you. They're not good. I promise. I promise you. Let folks know. Be proud about your about your walk. They will find you out. They will find you, the the good ones. I never forget. Somebody said, "Well, hey, where are all the good men?" And I said, "With all the good men." All oh, those ladies got upset with me. <laughs> they got upset with me. Hey, listen. Tell the truth. Shame the devil, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing. So, if you are the, if she is the weaker vessel, well, then treat her that way. Take care of her. Treat her like she's precious. I'm never going to go back and forth with my wife and go tit for tat and this and that. No. Shame on me. He said the, the bad ones come also. Listen, you got to be, <clears throat> you got to have any, how do I put this? How do I put this, Dutch? When they come, now everybody, everything comes. But. I was going to say, I was going to say something my wife, my, my wife, my mother said. <laughs> can I say it? Can I, can I say, okay. Yo, can I say what my mother said? Can I, can I just say what my mother said? I just, I just, I just, I just, I want to, I want to say what she said. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not cussing. T look, Titi's first one. Just say it. You need to get you, because my wife, my wife will call those those girls like that, kind of hot to trot fast, um, wicked, evil, whatever. She called them heifers. You need to get you some heifer spray. <laughs> get you some heifer spray. Some heifer repellent. Get you some heifer spray. What's that? Well, when they walk up to you, they should see how you are, and then you repel them. That is, listen, that is, here, here's the problem. Come on, come, listen, let's just, fellas, let's tell the truth. Uh, tell the truth, shame the devil. Keep it a buck, keep it a hundred, whatever you want to call it. No, Victoria, not heifer. <laughs> it's too proper. Heifer. <laughs> Gotta have some heifer spray. So let's, let's, let's tell the truth. Sometimes you guys, anything with breasts and legs, and eh, she's, she's potential. She's wifey material. Anything that, that, that's that got some hair and some eyelashes, and again, ladies, just public service announcement, those extra long eyelashes, there's not a man in the world that ever thought that y'all should get those four-inch long eyelashes. No, man, your eyelashes are so beautiful. You've got the longest eye. Another story. But she bats her eyes, and, and, and she's got something tight on, and you can't resist. Well, then what'd you tell her? You told her, hey, you told her you're available. You told her you're available. This is what you need. Some heifer spray. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I should I should not have said that. You get some heifer spray. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Nope. Tell, tell her to quote some Bible verses. Tell her to ex listen. Tell her to exegete John chapter 7. Not eight or six. Tell her exit it. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Sometimes, though, listen, sometimes, Dutch, can we be honest? Sometimes, sometimes we invite them in. I'm looking for a good woman. And any woman shows up, you'll do. You'll do. Stand your ground. Be the man that you're supposed to be. And I'm not saying you're not. I'm not saying you. But we guys, be the man you're supposed to be. And she'll see, okay, he ain't, he's not, this ain't, I'm wasting my time. 
I'm wasting my time with her. I mean, with him. Show her, you're not that kind of, mm -mm, make heaven proud. Make heaven proud. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and bottle this stuff up and sell it. I'm going to bottle this stuff up and sell it. <laughs> she, she calls him something else. I, what does she call him? So, men, you're the responsible ones. Yeah, but Corey is hard. Okay. Let me just help you out for a second. And we'll go ahead and leave on, on this. Corey is hard. It's difficult. What if she's this? What if she's that? Okay. It's hard. Is it too hard for you? So you got to figure out what I, I'm talking to the men. I'm talking to the men. Corey, you always talking to the men. Well, well, fine. Listen, go find you one of those. Listen, go find you the soft Christian channel. Go find the soft Christian channel. Thank you. Listen, listen. I, Katrina, doggone it, Katrina. Katrina says it's harder when you choose the wrong one. Say that again, sister. <laughs> Jezebel Spray. Choose the wrong one is, whole, is, is a lot harder, a lot draining. You might find yourself in jail or the hospital. Certainly broke. Yeah. You you get so, and you ladies can testify also. You pick the wrong one. You pick the wrong one. You Listen, you should have not chosen at all. So men, this is on you. First lesson, you don't hit a woman. Rule number two. Rule number one is you don't hit a woman. Rule number two. You don't hit a woman. Rule number three. You sissy, soft, whatever. You don't hit a woman. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. But what if she, you're already, see, you're already looking for an out clause. You don't hit a woman. If she, obviously, if she's a threat to your actual livelihood or someone else's, that's different. If she's got a gun, take her out. That's different. I'm not talking about that. But if she's swinging her hand, well, my, you don't get it. She works out. So work out with her. Rule number four, don't hit a woman. Rule number five, be a man. And you're good. If you if you can just be, if you listen, if you can just skip rule number one, two, three, four, and just go to five, you have everything covered anyway. Be a man. Be the godly man. Could you imagine Jesus hitting a woman back? Could you imagine that? I couldn't. Yeah, Arsenal, if you got to hit her, leave her. If you feel it's that bad, you got to hit her, leave her. Or what if she's blocking the door? Well, don't hit her. But you got one way in, one way out. Call the cops in. Stop attracting the wrong ones. Because some And some of you guys are in the situation because you brought the situation on yourself. You just had to have her. You just had to have him. And now you are dealing with the consequences. Let me just say this also, ladies. Choose better. Ladies, choose better. Some of you guys are just, hey, because he because he seemed like he was okay because he paid, listen, he paid for my McDonald's meal. So I think he might be the one. Some of you guys just choose better. Stop going with any old man. There are a lot of good godly men out here and a lot of good godly women out here. How you guys keep missing each other is because of you. I'm a godly woman, but I got my ungodly clothes on. Uh oh, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. I should I shouldn't have said that. I'm a good godly woman, but I got my my ungodly clothes on. Yeah, I got stuff poking out, and I got my chest where you can just you know you can see just some. I, I, all I want to do in Jesus' name is just. Show a little bit of the curves. And then some of you, you can't help it. So I'm going to see the, the top part of the little, the little line. You know, when we was little kids, we little boys used to love to see the little the little cleavage part. All oh, that did something to us when you was five or six or seven. Yeah, yeah five, six, seven-year-old boys, we used to look at that too. You got those, your godly clothes, huh? You got stuff tight. How many ladies don't even wear slips anymore? Do, you, do any of you ladies own slips? <laughs> I love the Lord, but I got my breasts out. 
I got my hiney out. I got all this stuff out, but I love the Lord. In Jesus' name, look at these hips. So he's not hearing that. He's looking at what, you, what you're presenting. Because he knows in his mind that's always, or that's what you lead with. You lead with your body, so he knows you're going to lead with your body with him. And one way or the other, he's going to be all right, because he's going to get something out of it. Fellas, you need to present yourself as a godly man. She can't grab you and force you and throw you down and, and do stuff to you. If she can, you might want to start working out some more. This is a problem with us. This, this shouldn't be a problem with us. It should only be a problem with the world. But the problem is we have adapted the roles and the, and the, the actions of the world. And so the same things are happening. It should never be named among us that men are beating women. It's the same human beings. But you're falling into this culture and you live in this way. So now we have to deal with it. And so the consequences are there. We're seeing women being beaten by men who are married. And if he's beating you, leave. If he's beating you, hopefully you're in the church. Tell somebody in the church. Tell the men. Tell the police if you need to. I recommend that. Okay. What, what about that? That's a good, that's a good question. What about verbal abuse from the the spouse what if she's offering up verbal abuse what if he's offering up verbal abuse uh if you are mistreating her if you are if she's offering verbal abuse or you're offering verbal especially you men if you're offering verbal abuse notice what it says um and show her honor as fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered Fellas, if you it, why are you praying if you're not doing if you're not honoring her? But if she is acting in a certain way, um, you guys need to go and get help. You need you need to go to the church and talk to the members of the church, a man and a woman, pastor, what have you. But you need to go. You don't have to take that. But now, is verbal abuse grounds for um, is grounds for divorce? Some folks are going to have to redefine what verbal abuse is because verbal ab abuse to one person is just me just expressing myself. So you're going to have to, that's why you need to sit and have other people around you. Godly men, godly women. There should be, it should be older women in the church helping with the older, I mean, with the older, with the younger women. It should be older men helping with the younger men. It should be that way. They're, they're, they're supposed to, there's not a hierarchy, but there's a, a, there should be some mature men and mature women that you look up to. And you should make up your mind that in this marriage, we're going to set ourselves up as an example of how to be a winning family, how, we, how we're supposed to look, how we are supposed to present ourselves, what we've come through. Me and her had problems. Me and him had problems. This is where we are now because of the Lord. And divorce is off the table. We make up our minds. We're not doing that. But if one of them is, is <laughs> if one of them is has resorted to violence and abuse, that's something different. Okay. If the person presents themselves or now becomes an unbeliever, but now listen, we don't take this lightly. So you don't just say, hey, you know what? Um, he says some things, and now I'm treating I'm treating him as an unbeliever. No, you need to get the church involved. You need to get the church involved so that they can all, hey, wait a second, okay, we see this. We see this. Now, if the church is such to where, hey, they're derelict, if your church is derelict in their duty, leave that church. But you know these, these things if you are involved in the church. If you're spending time, if, if you know the church, the church knows you and so forth, then they know that, that JR is Sue Ellen might think Jr. is is verbally abusive, and they say, "Well, no, he's not. He's just." So you need to have someone in because it, it could be it could be. I'm talking about the verbal side. It could be you, it may not be. The physical part can't get past that. Can't get past that. And so if he's hitting on her, you need the church in. You might you, you're probably gonna need the uh, law enforcement in, and then just move away. 
offer him, if you love him, the opportunity to get right. If you don't want to get right, if you can't get right, don't want to get right, well, then you know what? We'll talk with you later. See, see you next lifetime. That is, if you place your faith in Christ and, and actually get saved. But you are now treated as an unbeliever. And now, since the church has removed you, you are a deserted unbeliever. And so now we've got to leave you alone. Amen.